Brought to you by wikivd.com. Jay Cutler, American Football. Jay Christopher Cutler is an American football quarterback for the Miami Dolphins of the National Football League. He played college football at Vanderbilt and was drafted by the Denver Broncos in the first round of the 2006 NFL draft for whom he played for three seasons. In 2009 he was traded to the Chicago Bears where he played for eight seasons. Following the 2016 season Cutler announced his retirement and his intention to become a sportscaster for NFL on Fox's television broadcasts. However, following a season-ending injury to Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tanhill in August 2017, Cutler came out of retirement and signed with the team. Early years Jay Cutler was born in Santa Claus, Indiana in 1983. Cutler attended Heritage Hills High School in Lincoln City, Indiana. He started three years at quarterback for the Patriots football team amassing a combined 26-1 record in his junior and senior years including a perfect 15-0 during his senior year. Cutler and his team outscored opponents 746-85 including a 90-0 shutout at Pike Central. During his senior year Cutler connected on 122 of 202 passes for 2,252 yards with 31 touchdowns, while rushing 65 times for 493 yards with 11 touchdowns. He also started at safety for three years, intercepting nine passes as a senior 12th overall in the state. His team's perfect record during his senior year included the school's first 3A state championship, where Heritage Hills beat Zionsville in overtime 27-24. The most notable play of the game occurred when Cutler lateraled the ball to the halfback Cole Seifrig who then passed it to Cutler who ran it into the end zone. Cutler also played strong safety in the state championship and made 19 tackles. Cutler was named a first-team All-State selection by the Associated Press as a senior. In addition to playing football in high school, he was a first-team All-State selection in basketball, and garnered honorable mention All-State accolades as a shortstop in baseball. Cutler grew up as a Chicago Bears fan during his youth in Indiana. College career Cutler attended Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. He started all 45 career games that he played for the Vanderbilt Commodores football team. The most starts by a quarterback in school history. He did not miss a game in college due to injury. The Commodores were 11-35 during his tenure including going 5-27 versus the SEC. In 2002 Cutler set the school record for touchdowns and rushing yards by a freshman and rushed for more yards than any other Southeastern Conference quarterback that year. The Associated Press honored him with a first-team freshman All-SEC selection. In 2004 as a junior, Cutler completed 61.0% of his passes setting a school record while throwing for 1,844 yards, with 10 touchdowns and a career-low 5 interceptions. The 2005 season, Cutler's final year of play at Vanderbilt was his most successful. As an 11-game starter, he completed 273 of 462 passes for 3,073 yards, 21 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. As he be became the first Commodore to win the SEC Offensive Player of the Year since 1967. With his senior season performance Cutler became the second Commodore to throw for more than 3,000 yards in a season while his 273 completions and 21 touchdowns ranked second on the school's single-season list. He led the Commodores 
to victories over Wake Forest, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Richmond, and Tennessee. The Commodores also scored the second most points ever laid upon the Florida Gators at their current home field at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Vanderbilt nearly upset the 13th-ranked Gators before falling 49-42 in the second overtime after a controversial excessive celebration call prevented the Commodores from going for two at the end of regulation. Reflecting on Cutler's college career, former Denver Broncos safety John Lynch said if this guy can take a bunch of future doctors and lawyers and have them competing against the Florida Gators this guy is a stud. Cutler ended his career by leading Vanderbilt past Tennessee 28-24 their first over the Volunteers since 1982 and the first in Knoxville since 1975. Cutler passed for three touchdowns and 315 yards, becoming the first quarterback in school history to record four consecutive 300-yard passing performances. Cutler's final play in college was the game-winning touchdown pass to teammate Hurl Bennett against Tennessee, a finalist for the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. Cutler was a first-team All-SEC pick by the league league's coaches and led the conference with a school record 3,288 yards of total offense. While at Vanderbilt, Cutler was a three-year captain and four-year starter setting school career records for total offense, touchdown passes, passing yards, pass completions, pass attempts, and combined touchdowns. Cutler graduated from Vanderbilt in 2005 with a bachelor's degree in human and organizational development. Professional career Cutler was ranked by many experts as the third-best quarterback prospect in the 2006 NFL Draft. After Matt Leinert of USC and Vince Young of Texas, ESPN's Chris Mortensen and Ron Jaworski tabbed him as the best quarterback available in the draft and some scouts believed he had better arm strength than Young and Linus and compared him to Brett Favre for his gunslinger attitude. At the 2006 NFL Scouting Combine, Cutler completed 23 repetitions of a 225-pound bench press and ran a 40-yard dash in 4.77 seconds. Cutler was selected by the Denver Broncos in the first round with the 11th pick in the draft acquired from the Street Lewis Rams for their first and third round picks. Many believed Cutler was chosen by the Broncos due to the lackluster performance in the previous season's AFC Championship game of Jake Plummer. After the pick by Denver, Cutler said we had no warning. I think I knew about about 15 seconds before everyone else did. Cutler, as predicted by most, was the third quarterback chosen after Young and Linet. He is the third first-round pick to come from Vanderbilt preceded by Will Wolford and Bill Wade. On July 27, 2006, Cutler agreed to terms on a six-year $48 million contract which included $11 million in bonuses. 2006 season. After a strong training camp in 2006, Cutler was promoted from third to second on the Broncos' quarterback depth chart ahead of Bradley Van Pelt. He passed for more yards than any other rookie in the preseason. On November 27, head coach Mike Shanahan officially announced that Cutler would replace Jake Plummer as starting quarterback despite a 7-4 record because I think he gives us the best chance to win now. The controversial decision capped weeks of speculation and rumors about Cutler's impending promotion to a starting role. Cutler took his first NFL snap on December 3, and after some initial jitters completed his first touchdown to tight end Stephen Alexander in the second quarter. In the fourth quarter, he threw a memorable 71-yard touchdown to fellow rookie Brandon Marshall to tie the game 20-20.
It was one of the longest TD passes for a debut in NFL history and was also the second longest pass play between two rookies in Broncos history. He also had two interceptions and took three sacks in the loss. On December 10, in a road loss against the San Diego Ch Chargers, Cutler connected with tight end Tony Scheffler for two touchdowns in a span of 48 seconds which is tied for fastest in league history that two rookies produced a pair of scores scoring passes. Cutler's first win came in his third start on December 17, which was a 37-20 road victory over the Arizona Cardinals. He finished the game 21 of 31 with 261 yards, two touchdowns, an interception and a QB rating of 101.7, the highest for a Broncos rookie. Since John Elway in 1983, one touchdown traveled 65 yards in the air and was recorded as a 54-yard touchdown to Javon Walker on the Broncos' third play of the game. Shanahan said to the media, you, you saw what he could do today. It doesn't take a genius out there to figure out this guy is very composed, can make all the throws and plays with a lot of confidence. Cutler then led the Broncos to a Christmas Eve win over the Cincinnati Bengals 24-23 in his fourth start on the season. He went 12 of 23, with 179 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. He also directed the Broncos on a 99-yard drive in the third quarter that culminated on a Mike Bell two-yard touchdown run. As a result of the two passing touchdowns in the game against the Bengals, Cutler became the first rookie QB in NFL history to throw for at least two touchdowns in each of his first four games played. He also became the second rookie in league history to throw at least two touchdown passes in each of his first four starts. The Broncos' quest to clinch a playoff berth came up short in the final game of the season when they fell at home 26-23 in overtime to the San Francisco 49ers. The loss dropped the Broncos to a 9-7 overall record and 4-4 at home. Despite sustaining a concussion in the first half, Cutler finished 21-32 of 32 with 230 yards and a touchdown and led Denver on a game-tying touchdown drive in the closing minutes of regulation to force overtime. In five games played on the season, Cutler finished with a record of 2-3 and went 81 of 137 for 1,001 yards, nine touchdowns and five interceptions, earning a franchise rookie record passer rating of 88.5. He posted the second-highest TD percentage and third-highest TD to int ratio among NFL rookies since 1970 with at least 125 passing attempts. 2007 season The 2007 NFL season marked Cutler's first full season as the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos. In the first game of the season against the Buffalo Bills, Cutler led Denver to a comeback win on a 12-play, 42-yard drive culminating in a Jason Elam 42-yard field goal as time expired. Cutler's pass attempts, completions and yards for the game were career highs at the time. He led Denver to their second straight comeback win the next week in the home opener against the Oakland Raiders. Late in regulation Cutler moved the team 78 yards in 15 plays for the game-tying field goal. With 2.18 remaining, the game went into overtime where he engineered a 52-yard drive that led to another game-winning field goal by Elam. Cutler had a touchdown pass during the game making him the first Broncos passer to begin his Broncos career with at least one touchdown pass in his first seven starts. 
The streak reached nine games through losses to Jacksonville and at Indianapolis but ended with a 41-3 home loss to the San Diego Chargers in the fifth game of the season. After the bye week in Week 6, the 2-3 Broncos beat the 4-1 Pittsburgh Steelers 31-28. Cutler had a QB rating of 106.7 and career highs of 75.9% passes completed three touchdowns, 41 rushing yards and a long run of 31 yards, earning NBC Sunday Night Football's horse trailer player of the game. Cutler finally had an interception-free game in his 12th start against the 6-1 Green Bay Packers in which he drove 89 yards for a game-tying field goal in the last 227 of regulation, before losing in overtime 1913 on Green Bay's first play from scrimmage. In Week 8, Cutler had just four attempts against the Detroit Lions before leaving with a leg injury. Backup Patrick Ramsey floundered in a 44-7 loss. Cutler returned the next week in a 27 11 victory at Kansas City. In Week 10, the 4-5 Broncos faced the 6-3 Tennessee Titans in a MNF game. Cutler posted a career second-best 137.0 passer rating in a 34-20 victory. He was the first Broncos quarterback since Elway in 1995 to throw two 40-yard touchdowns in a game, and the 5-5 Broncos moved into a a tie, with San Diego atop the AFC West. However, the Broncos won only one of the next five games, a 41-7 Chiefs blowout. In that game, Cutler passed for four touchdowns, and a then career-best rating of 141.0. But that bright spot came between two pairs of losses. In the four games, Cutler had five interceptions took 12 sacks twice had a rating under 50.0, and culminated in 23-3 loss to San Diego that eliminated the Broncos from the playoffs. Cutler salvaged a 7-9 record with a 22-19 overtime win over Minnesota eliminating them as well. Denver missed the playoffs for a second straight year. Cutler started all 16 games, completing 297 of 467 passes for 3,497 yards, 20 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. He was the NFL's 12th-ranked passer and also had the 10th most passing yards. Furthermore, Cutler was the league's 9th best third-down passer with a 92.1 passer rating. It was the seventh most passing yards in Broncos history and third best completion percentage. Like his predecessor, Plummer Cutler showed mobility with 44 rushes for 205 yards and a touchdown on the season. In late 2007, various experts suggested Cutler was the young quarterback most likely to reach the elite status along the lines of Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Cutler, Brandon Marshall, and Tony Scheffler went to Atlanta together to train and work on timing for the 2008 season. 2008 season Before the 2008 regular season began Cutler and tight end Daniel Graham were voted offensive captains by Broncos teammates. Cutler started the season with a 41-14 Monday night football victory over Oakland. He completed 16 of 24 passes for 300 yards and two touchdowns, and had the league's second-highest passer rating. The next week, Cutler and the Broncos defeated the San Diego Chargers in Denver 39-38. Cutler went 36 of 50 with 350 yards passing and a career-best tying four touchdowns including one two Eddie Royal on fourth and goal with 0-24 left followed by a game-winning two-point conversion again to Royal. This occurred one play after Cutler fumbled but an inadvertent whistle 
by referee Ed Hotchuli before the Chargers recovered gave the Broncos the ball back. In Week 3, Cutler had 264 yards and two touchdowns in a 34-22 home win over New Orleans. Cutler threw two interceptions for the first time in the Broncos' first defeat 33-19 at Kansas City. Despite this he finished September 1st in the AFC in completions passing yards an attempt second in yards per attempt third in passing touchdowns and quarterback rating and fifth in completion percentage winning AFC Offensive Player of the Month honors. For the first time in his career, the Broncos edged Tampa Bay 16-13 behind Cutler's 23 of 34 performance with 227 yards, one touchdown and no interceptions. The Broncos were 4-1 and leading AFC West, but then followed a 24-7 loss to Jacksonville Jaguars where Cutler passed for just 192 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. Next, Cutler injured his index finger on the first play of a 41-7 drubbing at New England. He ended the night with 168 yards and two interceptions. After a bye week, the Broncos suffered their third straight defeat 26-17 to Miami behind Cutler's 24 of 46 passing for 307 yards, two touchdowns and season-high three interceptions. During the 1-4 skid, Cutler had all seven of the Broncos' touchdowns. In Game 9 the Broncos found themselves down 23-10. At Cleveland but in the fourth quarter Cutler threw a career-long 93-yard touchdown to Eddie Royal, followed by a touchdown passes to Daniel Graham and the game-winner to Brandon Marshall. With 1.14 left, Cutler finished the game going 24-42 of 42 with 447 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception and received AFC Offensive Player of the Week honors. For the first time in his career, the next week Cutler threw another late fourth-quarter touchdown to Daniel Graham for a 24-20 win at Atlanta. In Game 11 Cutler's streak of games, with a touchdown ended at 11 as he went 16 of 37 for 204 yards and an interception in a 31-10 loss to Oakland. He did however reach 3,000 yards on the season tying John Elway by reaching this mark in 11 games. In a windy game 12 at the New York Jets Cutler went 27 of 43 with 357 yards, two touchdowns and one interception in the 34-17 victory. The 7-5 Broncos had a three-game road win streak, three-game home loss streak and three-game lead on San Diego. With four games remaining, Cutler began December completing a season-high 80% of his 40 passes for 286 yards, two TDs and one end in a 24-17 win over the Chiefs. The win came via a 95-yard drive and go-ahead touchdown pass to Brandon Marshall for Cutler's fourth rally of the season. But Cutler was just 21 of 33 with 172 yards, one TD and one in dinner 2030 loss at Carolina. And despite 359 yards and two rushing TDs had zero passing TDs and one in dinner 30-23 loss to Buffalo. This setup a winner takes the division season finale against the San Diego Chargers. Cutler went 33 of 49 with 316 yards, one TD and two INTs, but it wasn't enough to counteract the Chargers' seven TDs and Denver lost 52-21 failing to reach the playoffs. For the third straight season, Cutler finished the season with career highs in passing completions, passing attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns, interceptions, rushing attempts and rushing touchdowns. At the time his passing yards, completions and attempts were all single-season franchise records for the Broncos. He also had the most 300-yard passing games in team history. 
for the season. Cutler ranked third in the NFL in completions, second in passing attempts, third in passing yards, and seventh in passing touchdowns. He was selected as the FedEx Air Player of the Week for his performances during weeks 10, 13, and 14. He finished third in fan voting for AFC quarterbacks in the 2009 Pro Bowl and was officially selected as a reserve. Before the game in Hawaii fellow Pro Bowlers Peyton Manning, Nick Mangold, and Chris Dialman threw him into a pool ruining his blood sugar monitor. A replacement one was found at a drug store and Cutler played without incident. 2009 season After the 2008 season coach Shanahan was fired and replaced by the Patriots offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels. On February 28, 2009, ESPN reported that the Broncos were listening to trade offers for Cutler a possibility he found upsetting. McDaniels denied interest in trades, but Cutler did not believe him. On March 15, Cutler listed his Colorado home for sale and confirmed that he had officially asked the Broncos to trade him. On March 31, Broncos owner Pat Bolan announced that the team would accommodate his request and three days later Cutler was indeed traded with the Broncos' 2009 fifth-round draft pick to the Chicago Bears for quarterback Kyle Orton the Bears' first and third-round selections in 2009 and first-round pick in 2010. On October 20, Cutler and the Bears came to terms on a two-year contract extension worth $30 million. Running through 2013, Cutler was the subject of most of the praise and criticism. During the Chicago Bears' mercurial season, he began the season with four INTs in a loss to Green Bay, followed by seven TDs to one int in three straight wins with a 100 QB rating. The Bears lost eight of the next ten games behind Cutler's 11 TDs versus NFL leading 20 INTs. This included a Game 9 loss to San Francisco where Cutler threw a career-high 5 INTs and 0 TDs, and Game 14 loss at Baltimore where Cutler had career worsts of 94 yards and a passer rating of 7.9. But Cutler again reversed direction in Game 15 against Brett Favors' division rival Vikings where he threw 40 Ds including a go-ahead late in the fourth quarter and 31-yard game winner in overtime. He then ended the season with another 40 D outing and win over Detroit. Cutler finished the season with 27 TDs league-leading 26 INTs 3,666 yards passing and career-worst passer rating of 76.8. 2010 season The Bears hired Mike Martz as offensive coordinator, though Martz had been critical of Cutler as an analyst. Both professed excitement about working together. Cutler led the Bears to a 3-0 start, throwing six touchdowns and only two interceptions. However, in Week 4, Cutler was sacked nine times in the first half against the New York Giants missing the rest of that game and the next with a concussion. He returned to six sacks in a loss to Seattle and four interceptions in a loss to Washington leaving the Bears at 4-3 at their bye week. Martz retooled the offensive line and showed more commitment to the running game allowing Cutler to escape the next three games with just six sacks total. He won those three followed, by then career best of 40 Ds and rating of 146.2 in a win over the 7-3 Eagles, and an 80.8% .8 completion percentage in a win over Detroit. After a 152-yard 0 TD 2-int loss to New England Cutler won back-to-back -back games with 3 TDs 1-int and 100 ratings in each before dropping the season finale to Green Bay. The Bears finished with an 11-5 record, an NFC North title and a first-round bye.
Despite taking a league-leading 52 sacks, Cutler finished the season with 3,274 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, 232 rushing yards and four comeback victories. In Cutler's playoff debut against the Seattle Seahawks he had 274 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, 43 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns in the Bears' 35-24 win making him the second quarterback in NFL history since Otto Graham in 1954 and 1955. To score two touchdown passes and two touchdown runs in a playoff game. In the NFC Championship game Cutler completed 6 of 14 passes for 80 yards and an interception. Before a knee injury sidelined him early in the third quarter of a 21-14 loss to Green Bay. The Bears did not make an immediate announcement about Cutler's condition allowing speculation to grow. In possibly the NFL's first player-on-player -player social media attack, Cutler was being criticized seconds after the injury by Morris Jones, Drew Darnell Dockett, Deion Sanders and Mark Schlereth. Bears coach Lovey Smith later clarified that he and not Cutler made the decision after consulting the medical and training staff. The following day, an MRI revealed Cutler had sprained his MCL. Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman commented that the widespread reaction reflected hostility towards Cutler's career-long polarizing attitude. Bears teammates defended Cutler, and his critics themselves became the targets of insults from other players including Packers Aaron Rodgers, Leroy Butler and B.J. Raji. 2011 season Throughout 2011 offensive coordinator Mike Martz was commonly criticized for aggressive play calling in a pass-happy offense leading to unnecessary wear on a quarterback returning from injury. In Week 2 against the New Orleans Saints, Cutler was sacked six times and kicked in the throat. During Week 6 Cutler was caught on microphone asking a player to go to Martz on the sideline and tell him I said fuck him. Despite these incidents by Week 10, Cutler had a middle-of-the-pack QB rating of 85.7 and the Bears were 6-3. However on November 20, Cutler broke the thumb on his throwing hand tackling San Diego's Antoine Cason after an interception. He played through the final drive for the win, but the injury required season-ending surgery. Under backups Caleb Haney and Josh McCone, the Bears lost six of their remaining seven games and missed the playoffs. 2012 season Before the season the Bears replaced Martz with Mike Tice hired Cutler's former coach Jeremy Bates from the Broncos and acquired his former teammate wide receiver Brandon Marshall from the Miami Dolphins. Unlike Martz Tice allowed Cutler to call audibles at the line of scrimmage. Cutler started his season by throwing an interception returned for a touchdown by the Colts' Gerald Freeman. He bounced back from a miserable first quarter to finish the game 21 of 35 for 333 yards, two touchdowns and a 98.9 passer rating. In a 41-21 victory, in a frustrating week two Cutler was sacked seven times, and threw four interceptions against Green Bay yelling at his poorest offensive line, and bumping left tackle J. Marcus Webb on his way to a 28.2 passer rating in a 23-10 loss. The line responded by surrendering just five sacks in the next three games all wins. The second a 34-18 win over Dallas where Cutler was 18 of 24 for 275 yards, two TDs, zero INTs, and the third best passer rating of his career. After unspectacular performances in close wins over Detroit and Carolina, Cutler had a 3-TD-0 in game, with a rating of 138.1 in a 51-20 blowout of Tennessee bringing the Bears to 7-1 on the season.
and Cutler's personal record in games with a 100 QB rating to 25-0. In Week 10 against the Houston Texans, Cutler joined Michael Vick and Alex Smith as the third NFL quarterback out with a concussion that day. His replacement Jason Campbell lost that game and the next. Cutler returned for a Week 12 win over the Minnesota Vikings. Despite a 119.6 passer rating against the Seattle Seahawks in Week 13, the Bears lost in overtime which was followed by two close losses to Minnesota and Green Bay. Cutler finished the season with two solid performances in easy wins over the Cardinals and Lions. Despite a 10-6 record the Bears missed the playoffs. Cutler again finished the season in the top five for time sacked but nevertheless lead the league in fourth-quarter passer rating with 114.7. In just four seasons, he was already the Bears' all-time team leader in passer rating and completions, and second in yards, touchdowns and completion percentage. His reunion with Brandon Marshall led to franchise records of 118 receptions for 1,508 yards and the seventh-year receiver's first All-Pro selection. 2013 season New head coach Mark Tressman developed a successful strategy to better protect his quarterback, and in the first six games Cutler was sacked only nine times compared to 23-19 and 19 in the previous three seasons. Under the new scheme Cutler began the season with three consecutive games with a 90-passer rating for the first time since 2009. In each of those wins he threw touchdowns in the fourth quarter, including game winners in Week 1 against Cincinnati and Week 2 against Minnesota. He threw three interceptions in a Week 4 loss to Detroit. In Week 5, Cutler was sacked three times and fumbled in the first 16 minutes of the game then rebounded for 358 yards, two TDs and a season-high 128.1 passer rating in defeat. He threw two touchdowns in a Week 6 win over the New York Giants. Through the first six games, he had a career-best 95.2 passer rating, five multiple touchdown games, and a franchise record 1,630 passing yards. However, Against the Washington Redskins the following week, his 100th career start. Cutler tore a groin muscle when sacked by Chris Baker, breaking Jim Harbour's franchise record. For most times sacked, Josh McCone was solid in relief, barely losing that Redskins game in a 45 41 shootout, and after the bye week, tossing two touchdowns in a 27 21 win at Green Bay. Cutler was medically cleared to return early for the Week 10 game against Detroit, where he had 250 yards, one TD and one int before a hit. From Stephen Tulloch in the second quarter finally drove him, from the game on the Bears' last drive, McCone drove 74 yards in 90 seconds for a touchdown. But the two-point conversion failed and the Bears lost 21-19. Cutler missed the next four games, with his injury and McCone played well in his absence leading to some controversy. When Cutler was reinstated as the starting QB in Week 15, Cutler threw two interceptions in the first half against the Cleveland Browns one returned for a touchdown but ended with a 102.2 passer rating and three TDs. In the next week's 54-11 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, Cutler ended up with 14,687 career passing yards for the Bears one more than Sid Luckman's franchise record. The season finale was a winner, takes the division matchup at home against Green Bay. Despite Cutler's 15 of 24 passing for 226 yards, two TDs and one int, for a 103.8 passer rating the Bears lost 33-28 on a last-minute Hail Mary missing the playoffs. With an 8-8 record, 
Cutler ended the season completing 224 of 355 passes for 2,621 yards, 19 touchdowns, 12 interceptions and a career-high 89.2 passer rating. On January 2, 2014, Cutler signed a seven-year deal keeping him with the Bears through the 2020 NFL season. 2014 season Cutler and the Bears struggled to a 5-11 record in Tressman's second year as head coach. The Bears opened the season with an overtime loss to the Buffalo Bills, in which Cutler threw two touchdowns and interceptions for 349 yards. The next week, the team overcame a 17-point deficit behind Cutler's four touchdown passes to defeat the San Francisco 49ers. The next week he led the Bears to a 27-19 victory against the New York Jets, tallying 225 passing yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. In both weeks 4 and 5, Cutler threw two touchdowns and two interceptions in defeats to the Packers and Panthers. In Week 6, Cutler recorded a career-high 381 passing yards, defeating Atlanta 27-13. Cutler recorded just 190 yards in a loss to Miami then threw three touchdowns, but suffered a lopsided 51-23 defeat to the New England Patriots, and threw two interceptions in an even worse 55-14 loss to the Packers. The 3 6 Bears drew criticism from former Bears linebacker Brian Erlacher, who suggested that Phil Emery shouldn't have re signed Cutler. Financially, he is one of the elite guys in the NFL. He just hasn't produced like an elite quarterback. Cutler and the Bears rebounded with two consecutive wins. He threw three touchdowns, two interceptions and 330 yards against the Vikings and 130 yards, and one passing touchdown against Tampa Bay. That would be the last win of the season. Cutler started the Thanksgiving Day game against Detroit with two passing touchdowns, but the Bears stumbled for the remainder of the game en route to 34-17 loss. He finished the game, with two touchdowns, two interceptions and 280 yards. The Bears suffered their eighth loss of the season to the Dallas Cowboys, in which Cutler threw 341 yards, two touchdowns and one interception, mathematically eliminating the Bears from the playoffs. Under criticism, offensive coordinator Aaron Cromer partially blamed Cutler's audibles and impromptu play calling for the poor record but later apologized to Cutler and the Bears organization in a press conference. The next week Cutler threw two touchdowns, three interceptions and just 194 yards for a season-low 55.8 passer rating in a loss. To the Saints, Tressman demoted Cutler in favor of Jimmy Clausen but Cutler returned when Clausen suffered a concussion in the loss to Detroit. In the Bears' season finale against the Vikings, Cutler completed 23 of 36 passes for 172 yards and a 63 passer rating in the loss. He accrued 3,812 passing yards, a career-high 28 passing touchdowns but led the NFL with 18 interceptions. 2015 season the Bears hired John Fox as their new head coach on January 19. Both Fox and GM Ryan Pace were initially lukewarm on Cutler but reluctantly decided to keep Cutler as the starter. Tight end Martellus Bennett indicated his teammates were similarly unenthusiastic. Cutler began the season with a lackluster 225 yards in a loss to Green Bay tossing a last-minute touchdown to Bennett to bring his rating up to 67.5. He began Week 2 against the Cardinals with eight straight completions but then threw an interception and injured his hamstring failing to stop safety Tony Jefferson from returning it for a touchdown. 
Without Cutler the Bears lost 48-23 to the Cardinals and were shut out 26-0 in Week 3 at Seattle. Cutler returned against Oakland throwing two first-half touchdowns and drove 48 yards in the last 2.05 to set up a game-winning field goal. In Week 5, Cutler threw two touchdowns in the final 3.05 for a dramatic 18-17 victory over the Chiefs and a tie of Jim McMahon's record for the most wins in team history. In Week 6, Cutler was just short of a third consecutive comeback, despite a season-best 353 yards. A fourth-quarter TD and two-point conversion followed by a 69-yard drive in 17 seconds. For a game-tying field goal the Bears lost in overtime to the Lions. After the bye, in Week 8 Cutler again scored a go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth quarter but the Vikings rallied for two late scores and a 23-20 win. In Week 9 against San Diego, Cutler threw yet another late fourth-quarter touchdown which both won the game 22-19 and set the Bears' franchise record. In Week 10, Cutler had a stellar performance in a 37-13 win St. Louis going 19 for 24 for 258 yards, 3 TDs and 0 INTs. His 151.0 passer rating was a career best and the best by a Bears QB since 1980. That would be the season high point for both the 4-5 Bears and Cutler. The Bears went 2-5 the rest of the season four of the losses by less than seven points. Cutler had three unremarkable games in narrow losses to Denver and San Francisco in a narrow win. At Green Bay, in Week 14 Cutler threw for 314 yards and two TDs against Washington, including a 50-yard completion with two minutes remaining but Robbie Gould missed the game-tying field goal for a 24-21 loss. The next week, Cutler was sacked five times and threw an interception in a 38-17 loss to Minnesota, then had just 156 yards but a 100.2 passer rating in a win over Tampa Bay. In the season finale against Detroit Cutler had two TDs, but three INTs including one deep in Lions territory at the two-minute warning to seal the 24-20 loss. Cutler benefited from offensive coordinator Adam Gass's run and screen-oriented style, cutting his interceptions to 11 and only throwing more than one in the season finale. He ended the season with 3,629 passing yards and 21 touchdowns and a career-high 92.3 passer rating despite his top four receivers averaging less than six starts on the season. 2016 season With Adam Gass's departure to become the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Dowell Loggins became the Bears' offensive coordinator. In Cutler's first two games, he was sacked eight times and had two interceptions in losses to the Houston Texans and Philadelphia Eagles. He missed the next five games before making his return against the Vikings, where he completed 20 of 31 passes for 252 yards, a touchdown and a 100.5 passer rating en route to a 2010 victory. Zach Miller praised Cutler's performance in his return even adding that he delivered a half-time speech to motivate his teammates. Cutler fumbled, and threw two interceptions in a loss to Tampa Bay. Cutler sustained a labrum injury in his throwing shoulder on November 20, 2016 in a loss to the Giants and missed the rest of the season. In his five games in 2016, Cutler recorded 1,059 passing yards, four touchdowns, five interceptions and a 78.1 passer rating. On March 9, 2017 Cutler was released by the Bears through a $2 million buyout clause. After the guaranteed years in his seven-year contract had run out, after Cutler's lackluster performances and injuries the move had been expected for months. 
as the Bears had decided to award a $45 million contract to Mike Glennon. In May 2017, Cutler announced his retirement from professional football and was hired by Fox Sports to be a commentator. 2017 season On August 3, 2017, Miami Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tanhill suffered a potentially season-ending injury, and the team reached out to the retired Cutler. On August 7, Cutler signed a one-year, $10 million contract with the Dolphins reuniting him, with former Bears offensive coordinator Adam Gase who had been hired as Miami's head coach in 2016. The Dolphins won their first game against the Los Angeles Chargers 1917. Cutler threw 24 of 33, for 230 yards with a touchdown to Kenny Stills in the road victory. Relationships Cutler began dating reality television star Kristen Cavallari in fall 2010 and became engaged to her in April 2011. They called off the engagement in July 2011, but subsequently confirmed their reconciliation that November. Cutler and Cavallari married on June 7, 2013 in Nashville, Tennessee. They have two sons and a daughter, Camden Jack and Jackson Wyatt. Despite the birth of his first son coming the day before the Bears played their preseason opener against the Denver Broncos, Cutler dressed for the game though he did not play. Cavallari gave birth to daughter Sailor James on November 23, 2015. Volunteer Work Cutler does volunteer work for young people with developmental disabilities through Vanderbilt's Best Buddies program. During the 2007 off-season Cutler started the Jay Cutler Foundation, which partnered with Mile High United Way's Youth Success Initiative to help at-risk youth overcome obstacles and graduate from high school. On May 1, 2008, Cutler announced that he had been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and needs daily insulin shots. He is responding well with the insulin treatments. Cutler works with Dedicated to Diabetes, which is a Denver-based organization that aims to improve public knowledge about diabetes. For the 2009 season Cutler teamed up with Eli Lilly and company in a campaign called Touchdowns for Diabetes. For every touchdown pass Cutler threw during the 2009 season, Lilly sent a child to diabetes camp by donating $1,000 to the Aiders Camp Scholarship Fund, roughly the cost of providing tuition for one child to attend a week of diabetes camp. For every pass Cutler completed in 2009 Lilly donated $100 to the Ada Camp Scholarship Fund to allow even more kids the chance to attend camp the following summer. In 2012, Cutler visited Perspectives Charter School in Chicago and talked about diabetes awareness in the media. An animated representation of Cutler briefly appeared in the South Park episode Guitar Queero. The show is set in Colorado and the characters are avid Broncos fans. Two characters Stan and Kyle meet Cutler and say nice to meet you. I mean you kinda suck. But my dad says you might be good someday. Cutler himself later responded to the episode saying, It was cool. I thought it was funny. They can make fun of me if they want to. Cutler along with former Broncos tight end Tony Scheffler and former Broncos backup quarterback Preston Parsons, took part in an episode of Oprah's Big Give filmed in Denver in 2007. The episode aired on ABC on March 9, 2008. In 2011, after the Bears lost five straight games while Cutler was out with a thumb injury, Chicago recording artist Magic One recorded Carty Come Back a parody of the song Baby Come Back. An internet meme called Smock and Jay Cutler portrays pictures of Cutler in an apathetic state, with a cigarette photoshop into his mouth. 
Cutler commented he is aware of the meme and gets a kick out of that. Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers performed a smoking gesture to reference the meme during a 38-14 win over the Bears in 2014. In 2013, Cutler played himself in an episode of the comedy show The League alongside his wife, Kristen Cavallari, who appeared in one other episode of the show. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?